Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Jewel, aka Mr. Pristine. Welcome to my page, Pristine Tech. Today, I want to review a phone that is actually rather surprising, especially given the price point. Um, if you were looking for a smartphone and somebody were to approach you that knew you were looking for a phone and they said, hey, I know where you can get a smartphone that's of good quality for about 50 or 60 bucks. Would you kindly dismiss them because you know that what you get is what you pay for? Or would you want to listen to what they have to say? Well, I'm here to explain to you that in 2016, there is such a thing that exists. And I'm talking about the Blue R1 HD. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the box here. And Blue is a company that is really known for making budget devices. Um, a lot of their devices, they're not really all that expensive. They're very competitive price-wise. And they do seem to pack a lot into the devices that they make for a very affordable price. Um, Blue typically, um, when you buy one of their phones, they come with all the accessories that you need. And so you don't have to go looking to buy anything additional for their phones. Um, this particular phone here, it only comes with the charger because the phone is so cheap. And when I say cheap, I mean this phone is $99 for the uh, 8 gig of internal storage and 1 gigabyte of RAM variant, or there's a 16 gig variant with 2 gigs of RAM, that's $110. So there is a $10 difference between the two variants of the phone. Okay, now I'll explain a little bit more about that as I get later into the video because there's a little more to discuss as far as pricing is concerned. Now, let's take a look at some of the specs of this phone, right? Because for a phone at this price point, you don't really expect much of it. But I'm here to tell you that even though this phone is cheap, it does pack a lot of good internal storage, and this phone is very capable of doing exactly what it is that you need it to do. Um, now, you know, if you're a heavy user, you know, this probably isn't going to be for you. Um, but just for your everyday, you know, internet browsing, you know, listening to music, um, brow you know, browsing on YouTube, streaming video footage on YouTube, checking internet, text messages, phone calls, things of that nature, it functions really well. Um, and so let's see, we've got a 5.0 curved display. And I believe that the glass on the front is Gorilla Glass. And you see how it curves down on the sides and in the front and the back. Very nice looking phone, very nice looking device. Um, I would recommend getting a screen protector because it is a fingerprint magnet. Um, if you look there on the bottom, we've got our micro HD port and we've got our microphone there. Okay, if we scroll around to the left side, there's nothing there. And these are, um, these are either metal or brushed aluminum sides. Um, it feels very premium even though the phone is really cheap. Okay, we've got the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack there. And on the right side of the phone, you see we've got our volume rocker up and down, and then we've got our on and off key, and that also acts as the home button or the sleep button, okay? Um, there is no fingerprint scanner on this phone, um, so if that's a feature that you're looking for, I'm sorry, this phone doesn't possess that. But again, for a phone of this caliber and a phone of this price point, you can't expect for it to have all the bells and whistles that some of the mid-range phones or some of the higher end flagship devices have. Um, so me, my personal opinion, I mean, this phone, this phone is a win. Um, I feel like this is for the budget consumers. Um, if you've got children and they're of age and they've proven to be responsible enough to have a phone of their own, this may be an option for them. Or if you're just looking to spend, you know, if you don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on a phone and you just want something that's going to be reliable, if you just want to just have basic phone usage, such as talk and text, checking your emails, um, checking your voicemails, things of that nature, you can invest in this phone and this phone will do all that stuff very well and you don't have to worry about breaking the bank, okay? It's got a 1.3 gigahertz quad-core processor. It's pretty snappy. This is the two gig of RAM variant here. Um, it's got a micro SD card slot that is expandable up to 64 gigs and it also has a dual SIM tray. So there's two SIM card slots. So if you are, and it's GSM network. And so that works with uh, T-Mobile, AT&T, Cricket Wireless, Metro PCS. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head some of the other carriers out there, uh, but there are a few more as well. So say if you've got service with T-Mobile and AT&T, right? You can take your T-Mobile your T -Mobile and your AT&T SIM card, and you can pop it into this phone, and you've got 4G connectivity 
um, cellular service from both of those carriers on this one device, um, which is a pretty nice touch. So if you're like going out of the country or something like that and say maybe T-Mobile doesn't have the best uh, um, the best service across country, but AT&T does, then you can just switch over to AT&T as um, your main you know your main your main line or vice versa you know if 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 you're in an area and T-Mobile seems to be uh, the better service provider at that time then you can just choose T-Mobile as your default carrier and um, it will connect to the cell towers in that area and you'll be able to pick up 4G uh, LTE connectivity um, wherever you are and so I think that that's a really nice touch um, and so Let's see, what else can I tell you about this phone? Um, got the camera there. The camera does protrude, and so when you put the phone down on a flat surface, it's not completely flat, it is kind of at an angle. Now, that may not be a bad thing for this particular phone. It is as far as scratching your camera lens, which is what you don't want to do. But the fact that Blue decided to put the speaker right there on the back, the fact that the phone is kind of slanted, may be a little beneficial because when the phone is completely on its back if you're listening to if you're streaming a video on youtube if you're listening to music if you're looking for a phone call and you're waiting to hear the noise uh, the voice um, whatever your um notification sound is for your text messages or whatever your ringtone is it's going to be very difficult to hear when this phone is sitting flat on a surface because well the speaker is sitting on the surface so with the phone kind of slanted a little bit it kind of takes the speaker off of the surface that you have it set on just a little bit so maybe you can hear the sound a little better. Um, but I feel like a lot of people would want to protect their camera lens and so the best way to do that would be just to put the phone in a case. Um, typically the cases kind of overlap the camera lens so when you set it on a flat surface the camera lens isn't touching the surface at all. Um, but just know that if you set this phone down on its back, which a lot of people tend to do, I know that I do that all the time, to me it's just the norm as to how you would set a phone down, you're going to block the speaker. And so I find that that's very questionable on Blue's behalf as to why they would place the speaker right there. Um, but it is what it is. I mean, um, to some people that may be a deal breaker to me, considering what this phone is capable of at the price point, it's not that big of a deal. Um, the default setting for the speakers, um, just out of the box, they sound terrible. But the good thing that Blue decided to do was they put an equalizer in uh, an equalizer in the phone and a bunch of different sound presets. So you can customize this speaker to sound how you want it to. And so when you take it out of the box, when you listen to it, you're not going to be pleased with the sound quality. But if you tweak it a little bit, it may sound a little better for you and you may be a little bit more satisfied with the sound quality that this device is willing to put out. Um, okay, now... Let's get into the camera a little bit. Um, it's got an eight megapixel rear camera, which it isn't the greatest. I mean, we live in an age where, you know, we've got the, the LG G5, phenomenal camera. The camera on the Galaxy S7 or the S7 Edge, phenomenal camera. iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, phenomenal cameras. Um, and a bunch of other uh, phones that have really great cameras. Um, you can't expect for this particular camera to live up to those names that I just named, but don't rule it out. It definitely does the job. OK, um, it doesn't have optical image stabilization. Um, it doesn't record in quad HD or anything fancy like that. But given the price point, the camera, it works. It's 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 pretty surprising how well the pictures come out. Um, it's got a front facing uh, five megapixel selfie cam. And as you see there, there's your LED flash. So that's a nice touch. And the selfie cam, I mean, it looks pretty good as well. Again, it's decent. It's doable. It's not the best, but it's not the worst as well. But it's definitely manageable. Um, so again, you know, you know, there's not really too much negative to say here for this particular price point. My personal opinion, a lot of phones of this particular price point, I'd have to say that this has to be the best one that you can get for this particular price point. Now, speaking of price point, this phone... If you are an Amazon Prime member, you can get this phone for $49.99 if you want the 8 gig of memory, 1 gig of RAM variant. $59.99 if you want the 16 gig of memory, 2 gig of RAM variant. And again, it's just a $10 difference. So for an extra $10, you're getting an extra gig of RAM, 
which is wonderful because that definitely helps out with performance. And you're also getting eight more gigs of internal storage, which is also a plus. So to me, I would just recommend anybody spend the additional 10 bucks and, you know, get the extra memory and the extra gig of RAM. But the option is available, you know, if you want to spend $10 cheaper. Um, now, the thing that I want to tell you with the Amazon Prime versions of this particular phone, there is Amazon ads that run all through this phone right so when you set up this phone if you buy it off of Amazon and you're a prime member and you decide to get it at one of those discounted prices before you even set up the phone you have to log into your Amazon account if you don't have one you have to set one up now me personally I buy stuff off of Amazon all the time so whenever I hit the button my home button that's an Amazon ad right there it doesn't appear to, it's not a, a lot of people knock the phone because they felt like it was gonna be really intrusive but it's not and the way to get rid of it it's just to simply swipe the screen up. There's my keypad to unlock the phone. When I unlock the phone, take a look at that. Picture quality is crystal clear. It's a 720p HD display. Again, it's not your quad HD display, but it works. It's very bright. The color variants, they pop out at you. When I first turned the phone on, when I took it out of the box, the screen came on and it was this bright white light and it was really bright. I had to like refocus my vision because I wasn't expecting it to be that, to be that bright. Um, very snappy here, as you can see. Um, so yeah, the phone, it's, it's an excellent device. Um, again, the Amazon ads, they don't appear to be all that intrusive, but some people, they don't wanna deal with that. And if that's the case, it's still a really good deal just to pay the $99 for the eight gig variant, or just pay an additional $10 for the 16 gig variant. To me, the Amazon ads, they're not really intrusive. And actually, you know, the fact that I just like to buy stuff, a lot of tech stuff, when I hit that, there's a lot of things that pop up. It lets you know on sales on Amazon that if you weren't thinking about it, you might miss out on a good sale. And so this is a good way for it to notify you about something that you may want to get your hands on and you can get it for a good deal. That's just work. Now that's just me. That's what that works for me. That may not work for everybody. But again, if you're an Amazon Prime member and you want to take advantage of this phone, you can buy this phone for 50 or 60 bucks. Um, if you don't want all the Amazon uh, ads and things. Uh, you can buy this phone at the 8 gig variant for $99.99 and the 16 gig variant for um, for 110, which still is a great value for this particular phone. So my overall thoughts and conclusions: um, I think this phone overall is a very very solid device given the price point. Again, this is definitely targeting the budget consumer. Um, so again, if you've got kids and you're looking for a first phone and you don't want to spend a bunch of money. This may be for them. If you're just looking for a phone and you yourself don't want to spend a bunch of money, this may be for you. If you're just looking for a backup phone and you don't want to spend a bunch of money, but you know that you've got something reliable that you can fall back on if whatever your daily driver device is uh, decides to crap out on you, then you know you've got a good quality uh, device here, very well built um, for a very good price. Um, so again, if you like this video, please hit that like button below and subscribe to the channel. Every subscription helps the channel out greatly. Um, I'm looking forward to doing more reviews. I've got reviews coming on the Alcatel Idol 4S, and I'm also going to be reviewing the ZTE Axon 7, and also a very interesting phone uh, that I just recently got from Amazon a couple of days ago was the Nextbit Robin. Um, this is a very interesting device, people, so stay tuned for that review. That's going to be coming soon as well. But in the meantime, I hope you all stay safe, stay blessed, and definitely stay pristine. Peace. I'll see you in the next video.